This video is to show how to enable HCI mode with the CSR 8675 or 8670 dev kit using the unified firmware from the ADK 4.0 or higher. <clears throat> um, the reason for this mode is to enable, enable device under test externally from uh, an external CSR tool called BT Cli in order to connect an external classic Bluetooth loopback tester such as an Aritsu MT8852B um, to perform some simple production test or RF test parameters um, using the loopback test mode that's built into the firmware of the CSR8675. So uh, I will use the USB to SPI programmer board in order to make the adjustments over SPI to the CSR8675 dev board. And you will need to download uh, the ADK 4.0 or higher in order to access the firmware for the 8675, um, which is, uh, or 8670. And you will need to download the latest Blue Suite tools from the CSR support webpage. So there are a couple things that need to be done before performing any major pro reprogramming of the board. Um, and that is to make note of the Bluetooth address, the crystal frequency, and the crystal trim of the dev board, as these are very specific to values for every board that is shipped out and fine tuned uh, by the factory from CSR. So Go into plug in your um, plug in your boards uh, in your device manager. You should see the if your if the drivers have been installed correctly, you should be able to see the CSR. Sorry, wrong. The CSR USB to spy board in the device manager. That would be this CSR USB to SPI converter. Um, if you have that successful, then you you are able to. Uh, that is that comes installed the driver for that for the USB to SPI programmer board from the ADK uh, and all, um, possibly the CSR Blue Suite. I'm using an older version of the CSR Blue Suite, which is 2.6.2. And what we need to do first is go and use PS tool and then select SPI over BC as AMD. And this is the USB to SPI board that's connected uh, over USB to my Windows machine. I'm sorry, to my lap Mac laptop, which is a MacBook running Windows in a virtual machine. So we'll click OK. It'll take you to the Bluetooth address. This is a default one that I blew away, but your Bluetooth address may be different. Please make note of this Bluetooth address. This is very important. Um, and uh, because you will use this for the Enritsu tester, you will need to use know this Bluetooth address value when you use an external loopback test tester uh, for the test mode. So make note of the Bluetooth address and then also go to just go ahead and type crystal crystal frequency for the dev board it should be 6590 um, for dev boards it's 6590 because it's using a 26 megahertz crystal um, if using another crystal such as a 16 megahertz or any other division this value may need to change this will be dependent on what crystal frequency is chosen on any production board or any other RF design and then we need to go to crystal trim Trim offset for the crystal frequency. Right now, mine is set to zero, um, but um, your value may be different. If there is a different, if there's a, if there's a value for your board, please make note of this as well, because all this will need to be reprogrammed back when we program new version of the firmware. So, what we will do in case. There, you don't know the state of the firmware of or what kind of firmware that's in your on your that's currently programmed your dev board. We will go and 
completely flash race whatsoever's on a flash on 8675 and we will program a new vanilla firmware um, uh, onto the chip. So in order to do that we need to go to um, the blue suite, open up blue flash and select the USB to spy that's already on there and we want to stop processor. When we stop processor we need to do a flash erase and we will erase the full chip. So the chip is completely blank with the flash and then now we will need to choose new files, a new firmware to program into the A675 chip. In order to do that, go to your C drive. When you collect, select file. Go to the ADK that you have recently downloaded. In this case, I'll use ADK 4.0. Go into firmware, assisted, unified. So if you're using an 8670, the firmware name is under Gordon. If you're using an 8675, a board, you will need to select the RIC folder. Since I'm using an 8675, I will select the RIC. And there are two types of file, um, stack files. Basically, there's a loader unsigned. This will need to be programmed first. Um, and you want to select the XPV file. So this is the bootloader. Uh, select that and we'll click download into the chip. And once it's done, choose the file again and then we'll actually select the stack, Bluetooth stack file. Uh, and you want to choose the XPV file. So stack unsigned, click open, and then download. And we're now downloading the Bluetooth firmware and bootloader into the 8675 that we just went to chip. So there's no application running um, because the application resides using a, a vm.app file with the ADK. But all we're doing is putting the firmware in with no app. So we'll go ahead and start the processor. Processor should be running. And we'll go ahead and close this out. I personally like to um, close everything out and as the processor starts. Then we need to go back into PS Tool. So go into Blue Suite and select PS Tool and select the spy. And this is where you need to reprogram everything again because when we erase, this is what you'll see. Now you should match because this is the default, but whatever the Bluetooth address you read previously, reprogram them back into this field. The same thing goes for the crystal frequency. You program back in and the trim, crystal trim um, onto the board. So once you make sure when you program the different values you program and then you hit set to make sure it writes the value into persistent store as you are changing these values back to what you make note of. The There are two more PS keys you need to change. One of them will be enabling the HCI command status. I'm sorry, um, HCI traffic routed internally. So we want the HCI traffic to be routed outside of the chip and not internally to the app, uh, to the stack. Uh, uh, so we need to, but if this value needs to be all zeros, which is false. Um, if it's set to one, that is when you actually will run the embedded application. In order for the embedded application to work, uh, you need to set this to one. But for this case of using, sending HCI commands externally um, on the, CSR 8675 development board, uh, we need to set this to zero. So that means um, the HCI traffic can go outside of the CSR 8675. So make sure this is zero, click set. Then we need to enable what the external host interface will be. So if you just type in host interface and we have selected host interface. By default, it's using the UART. In this case, because it's easier to use the USB with the CSR8675 dev board, I'm going to go ahead and select the USB link. When you set the USB link, uh, make sure that you uh, there is it's going to be the same 
plug that you power the board off of. So make sure you must plug in the 8675 dev board where it powers the board is also plugged into your machine, not just the USB to spy. Um, so we'll click set. And those are the two interfaces that, uh, those are the two additional PS keys that need to be programmed. So once um, you program the host interface to USB link, and then the other major PS key is the HCI traffic router internally. This needs to be set to false. Then you could do a reset and close. By resetting and close, um, the chip, I like to hit the reset button as well on the uh, dev board uh, and might uh, quite possibly unplugging and replugging the board back in just to make sure it re-enumerates properly on the USB bus in this new mode. Uh, you, you need to make sure you have the driver installed for the CSR8675. I'm sorry, for uh, at an HCI mode, this should be included when you install the Blue Suite. Uh, if it is successful, you'll see in this CSR Blue Core Bluetooth um, USB enumeration. So this is a CSR specific driver. When you're working directly with the HCI mode, this driver needs to be installed, or else the tools within Blue Suite will not work on communicating over USB to the HCI layer. Now, if everything is successful, you can go back to Blue Suite and you could even relaunch PS Tool, but now you can select the USB interface and you'll see this uh, backslash backslash dot backslash CSR0. That's the first USB um, endpoint with the CSR VIN pit. So if I select that, I can actually now send these specific commands that PS Tool uses to the chip is actually going in over USB. But what we really want to do now is we need to use a program called BTCLI. BTCLI is a command line tool where you could send specific HCI commands to the chip externally. So. The host interface we define as the USB, and you want to select TSR0 because that's the driver that was uh, installed to communicate to the chip. And you should see the screen. I typically like to do a reset. And um, actually, I just hit the reset on a board and then type in restart or case. And you should get a no op. Again, that's restart. Um, Hit the reset button. I'm sorry, then start, type restart again. Because you want to make sure you see this no op. That means the, uh, um, the, the chip is communicating back to this BT Cli window. This uh, BT Cli window is a pretty powerful tool. You can basically send HCI commands by hand down to um, the, the chip. But, for this particular video, we will enable the device under test mode. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is do an RBA, which is short for read Bluetooth address. So that is an HCI command to the lower layers of the chip, and it'll read back that Bluetooth address. So remember that Bluetooth address that we saw in PS Tool? Here it is in its natural factor. Make note of this, the 0, 0, 2, 5, whatever these digits are. Because when you use the external Bluetooth tester, you need to program, set this Bluetooth address on the external tester so it knows which device to connect to to conduct the test. And it's very simple from here. In order to, for the loopback test to, to work successfully, you need to put the Bluetooth device or the CSR 8675, 8675 into a discoverable and connectable mode. There's one command that does all of this within BT Cli, and all you need to do is type in slave. Sorry, I need to spell it correctly. Slave. Now, the slave command basically is set all these subset commands. So basically, now your 
the vice is discoverable. And in fact, I believe the friendly name on the default is like CSR-BC7 would be the friendly name um, that we would be advertising basically when you discover this device. That would be the default. You could actually change the friendly name uh, in order for you to make sure that it's the right device. And then right after you type in slave, you type in EDUTM. That stands for enter device under test mode. Hit enter. So enter device under test mode success. Now, what this means is that any device, such as the Enrutsu external loopback tester that connects to the 8675 dead board, dev board, will now respond to loopback test commands. So this is all that you need to do externally from an HCI command to send the um, make the ACSR 8675 discoverable and connectable and then enabling the device under test mode. Uh, success should mean that uh, the mode is already uh, invoked so then whatever the, the Bluetooth device that connects to the ACSR 8675 dev board preferably the external loopback tester will then support the loopback test commands. And that concludes uh, the tutorial video on how to enable um, loopback test mode externally via an HCI command with the CSR 8675 development kit.